Good morning, welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Friday, February 7th, 2014. In Sochi, Russia, today the Olympics have begun. Events have already occurred in advance of the opening ceremonies, which are going to occur in about uh, eight hours time from now. Uh, it's going to launch a nearly $900 million bet by U.S. advertisers that the Winter Games will become a feel-good event for TV audiences. Of course, the Olympics are going to unfold against the backdrop of a potential terror attack. However, American advertisers seem to be undeterred. No major advertiser has canceled its order for commercial time during NBC's unprecedented 1,539 hours of coverage. In fact, the potential threat of a terror attack seems, if anything, to be keeping the advertisers locked in. One advertising booker in Chicago said, when there's intrigue or strife surrounding the games uh, and where they are occurring in Russia means that advertisers are more likely to be locked in because more viewers will be watching, at least for the first few days. Presumably that means that after a, a terror attack is uh, not unfolding, the uh, ratings will return to normal. After a relatively benign year for U.S. weather-related losses, Aon Benfield is saying that insurers face claims of more than a billion and a half dollars in the month of January alone from severe winter weather. Uh, the costliest stretch of four separate cold weather events uh, was about $1.4 billion in claims that came from a cold period in the second week of January where more than 20 inches of snow fell on the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley and freezing rain struck the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. The losses were not just limited to the United States. In China, for example, about $170 million of economic losses uh, occur occurred from snow and freezing temperatures. Thailand saw the uh, coldest air in 30 years hit the country, killing dozens of people. And of course, windstorm Christina, which went through uh, the UK, France, and Scandinavia, also caused serious damage as well. Michael Lee, the chairman and CEO of the embattled U.S. carrier Tower Group, has resigned. This just weeks after the company accepted a $172 million takeover offer from Michael Carfunkel's ACP Re. Lee is leaving immediately. He's going to be succeeded by 72-year-old William Fox Jr., a member of the Tower Board. Bermuda-based Endurance Specialty has reported that its annual earnings more than doubled to about $280 million as the company benefited from lower cat claims. Endurance, of course, is John Charman's company. Uh, they reported a $59.9 million quarter for the fourth quarter, or about $1.35 per diluted share, falling short of estimates of about $1.44 a share. However, Charman said that the company is well on track and uh, has begun to reap the fruits of the changes that he made. They're benefiting from lower levels of cat losses and strong favorable reserves as well as the impact of significant underwriting in a soft market. Prudential Financial is spending about $57 million to reward workers after topping its CEO's profitability goal last year. Prudential, which is the number two American insurer after MetLife, is distributing a one-time bonus of about $1,300 to 44,000 employees. It's going to account for a nine cents a share hit caused Prudential to miss its analyst estimate uh, profit by three, three cents a share when it came out yesterday. Analysts cried, why didn't they disclose the employee bonuses in advance? And the uh, CEO indicated that the employees had not been officially notified yet. The official, uh, who was John Strangefeld, who was the CEO, is himself receiving a $30 million bonus. Al Jazeera is reporting that two explosions have been heard in a Cairo uh, district, a busy district uh, of Cairo called Giza, by the Giza Bridge. Uh, no reports on any uh, fatalities or injuries yet. It's thought that the explosives were homemade and detonated close to uh, a mosque in Giza Square. Of course, uh, the uh, prayer services in the uh, Islamic world are just about wrapping up right now. One of Minnesota's most expensive industrial accidents has triggered a legal fight over a 22-month repair bill that cost more than $200 million. Xcel Energy and um, Southern Minnesota Municipal Power Agency had power supplied to them by an uh, electrical generator called the Sherco 3 in Becker, Minnesota that was powered by a turbine made by GE. 
Uh, the uh, repairs have been covered by the insurance policies held by insurers in London, and now the two municipal authorities are suing for consequential damages because of the cost that they had to incur to buy replacement power. Uh, this will presumably be a relatively straightforward event. All you'll have to do is check the insurance contract and see whether or not consequential damages are allowed. Meanwhile, an interesting story, the Taliban in Afghanistan is saying today that they have captured a military dog belonging to NATO forces in Afghanistan, releasing a video of the dog wearing a high-tech harness. The Taliban is saying that the dog was captured near a battle east of the capital of Kabul earlier this week. They sent an email video showing a brown German Shepherd-type dog on a leash held by an armed Taliban fighter. It wore a black harness mounted with what the Taliban said was a video camera. The Taliban is calling the dog Colonel. The uh, Taliban said by phone that the dog is being held in a safe place and is, quote, okay. He was not injured and is not being mistreated. NATO confirmed that one of their dogs is missing. Military service dogs are used to sniff out bombs and are used in special force raids as protection against intruders or help to do up, helping to subdue suspects. Bringing dogs into homes during raids is considered controversial in Afghanistan because dogs are considered unclean by many Muslims. It would be interesting to see whether or not ransom negotiations will ensue for the dog. I hope so. That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Have a good weekend, and we'll see you Monday.